So what inspired you to title the book, Laughing Shall I Die? Well, um, two things struck me reading uh, the sort of vast corpus of Old Norse literature. One is the fascination with death scenes, death songs, famous last stands, you know, Ragnarok. Uh, and the other thing actually was this um, sense of humor. Uh, they tell me uh, that if you go on a dating site these days, you should advertise yourself with the letters G-S-O-H, good sense of humor. But the Viking sense of humor is B-S-O-H, bad sense of humor. <laughs> and it's the kind of sense of humor where my academic colleagues in universities are liable to purse their lips and say, well, I don't think that's very funny. Um, Unfortunately, I do think it's funny. So uh, I, I am an exponent of bad sense of humor myself. And bad sense of humor is usually cruel um, and sneaky and tricky. And the way I put it is it's, a, it's humor with a mean streak in it. And that's what people, well, that's what they appreciated. And I appreciate it too, actually. Um, but a lot of people don't. Well, it's one thing to appreciate it in a book, and but they were appreciating it in in they were appreciating it in real life. They were appreciating it as the blood splattered out of their uh, arteries. Yes, general. exactly. Uh, well, I, I'll give you an example, shall I? Um, well, uh, this is uh, a bunch of Vikings lose a battle. Uh, they don't take prisoners. They're all sitting on a log, waiting to have their heads cut off. Uh, and uh, several of them have their heads cut off. And then one says, okay, uh, I'll have my head cut off, but look, um, uh, I'll even kneel down and put my head on the block, but I'm a bit worried about my hair. I don't want to get blood in my hair. Could some kind person get my long hair and pull it over my head so that the neck is exposed and then you can cut my head off. Oh, uh, and I don't want it to be just a thrall. It's got to be a proper warrior who holds my hair. And they say, okay, fair enough, good, good enough. He kneels down, they do that, they pull his hair over. And as the ax comes down, he pulls his head back. And the ax cuts off the hands of the guy who's holding his hair. Laugh? Well, that's a good joke. And all the guys who are standing around, I mean, the execution party, they all say, hey, that was so funny. Um, we're going to let you off. You're obviously a good guy. We haven't laughed so much for, for years. And he says, no, showing Drengskapper, you see. Uh, I can't accept my life. You'll have to let all the other guys on the log off as well. So they say, well, all right, that's, that's, that's fair enough. That's honorable behavior. So they let everybody off. Well, uh, everybody said, you know, this is just a legend. You know, we can't go believing that kind of thing. Then um, about 15 miles, from where I live, behind me, they found uh, just recently a pile of 54 headless bodies. And they also found a separate pile of 51 skulls. And they're all Scandinavians. And they've all been beheaded in a mass execution. Uh, and one of the funny things is one of the Vikings waiting to be executed said he wasn't going to kneel down and be beheaded from behind. He was going to face the blow and they'd have to cut his head off like that. Well, that's what that's what happened. That's what the archaeologists found in this pit 15 miles away. Several of the men there had been beheaded from in front. Well, that seemed, I apologize, go ahead. I think that's because they wanted to show that they would face the blow. Mm. It's like refusing the blindfold when you're, if you're going to be shot. No, they'd face the blow. And another one, actually, the same story is told about St. Magnus of Orkney, who refused to kneel down and be beheaded like a thief. And actually, when they recovered his body, which is in the cathedral, that's right, he'd been cut down from in front, standing. That scene with the hands and the hair and the is in uh, is in the History Channel's uh, show Vikings. Um, yeah. yeah, 